Um, thank you so much for giving me this great opportunity to share my experience um, with colleagues here. Um, congratulations for Tate's uh, BWK for organizing this great event. I a little bit rearranged the topic on how nations are built to how states are built. I um, would focus in Nigeria and with some good examples of some states I work with. I will say a little bit um, about my experience before sharing some few things on how states are built. We are aware of Trevenin Scholarship here, Trevenin Scholarship. So if you are aware of Trevenin Scholarship, and if you want to apply for Trevenin Scholarship, there is a section where they ask you a question, um, where will you see yourself in the next five years? That question carries the highest mark on Chevening Scholarship form. I'm giving you free of charge secret today. They ask you that question, where do you see you are saving the next five years? So when I apply for Chevening Scholarship, they ask me that particular question. Where do you see you are saving the next five years? Specifically, I mention that in the next five years, <clears throat> I see myself as one of the enabler a strong contributor of reform and delivery of results in Nigeria. Specifically in the social sector, governance, and poverty reduction. And this is where they now capitalize during the interview, they ask me questions. And I'm telling you, within the five years, I was able to achieve that goal. Within that first five years, I started working with the DFID. Currently, we call them FCDO, as education advisor in northern Nigeria, working with nine northern governors. Nine northern governors. I now proceeded to work with the United Nations in the southern Nigeria. I work closely with six southwestern governors. In the course of my journey, I supported 22 governors in Nigeria, 22 governors. So, in summary, in summary, how states are built, um, it was based on experience of the past 17 years of my work with governors across these states, on how they should deliver reform and results. In the course of my work with them, I come to realize that states are built and based on the kind of people who are elected into offices. And I come to realize we have three types of governors. Checks? Yes. Checks? Yes. We have three types of governors in Nigeria. Three types of governors. One, we have the governor that has no godfather. He made his millions somewhere, come and put posters and billboards and come over the structure and he wins election and it's a governor without godfathers. I did not mention anyone. If you know anyone, fantastic. <laughs> Number two, we have a governor with mono godfather, only one godfather, monolistic godfather. You only report to that only one godfather. It means for that governor to deliver health, education, governance, agriculture in that state, is answerable to that only one godfather. The third governor we have is the kind of a governor with multiple godfathers, and we call them political investors. They invest in the political structure so that they can be able to manipulate the governor. So, an ability of a governor to deliver in a state, it depends on which kind of category you fall in between these three. Checks? Yes. If we want to know the governor that is very serious, we look at three key appointments. I mentioned first three types of governors. Now I'm mentioning three appointments. When you have a newly elected governor, we measure his capacity and his ability to deliver based on three category people that he appointed. First, one, chief of staff. Two, SSG. Three, chief press secretary. If a governor appointed SSG, chief press secretary, chief of staff, we measure their capacity. The first thing we do is to put them on Google. 
Put the all three names on Google and look at their digital footprint. Who are they? Where are they coming from? What impact have they made? That will determine whether the governor is going to deliver or not. Checks. Yes. Moving forward, I come to realize also there's a three types of political appointees. Three types of political appointees. In all the advisors, the commissioners, senior special assistant, the PA, I categorize them into three. Do you want to hear? Yes. Shall I start? Yes. One. We have what to call the clannish group. The clannish. They belong to a clan or a family that have been contributing to political space in Nigeria since 1983. Or 1979 of MPP and... and uh, uh, give me their names. Yes. So, those particular clan, whether they contributed or not, their name supposed to ring a bell within the cabinet of the governor. He identify one or two from the family and give them appointment. So that they will allow him to move on. No drama, no headache. The second group of political appointees are the political investors. They put in billboard, poster, they campaign, they spend a lot of money, they are jack ballot boss, they kill the opposition, you know, they go to radio station and attack anybody that attacks the governors. Those are political investors. They have nothing upstairs, but they have something to offer politically. The governor will give them appointment, go and receive alert, and keep quiet. The third category are the deliverers of the reforms and results. My prayer and wish for all of you here, most especially the students, try and be in this category. The governor has to come and beg you before you collect an appointment. Because you are already working with Central Bank of Nigeria. You are working with United Nations. You are working with World Bank, Islamic Development Bank. What are you going to do with commissioner position? The governor has to travel to Lagos and talk to you. Come and collect appointment. You negotiate. I have my colleagues. She's currently the commissioner of health in one of the states. She spent six months negotiating with the governor before she picked the appointment. Because she knows her what, and she's not just the type that you just come and give appointment, she will pick. So please build your capacity so that you can be in that particular category. Checks? Yes. To move forward again, I come to realize there's a three categories of people that print poster and go for election. Our day they want to contest. Three again. First, those that print poster and become senator and governor because they want the name. They want the name, I'm a governor, and that's all. The second category are those that they want to do something, but they don't have the capacity. And they have to assemble brains around them to come and help them to deliver. And the last category are those that are competent. I don't intend to mention a state, but I'll be forced to mention a state like Kaduna State. Let's put ours together to Malala Surayarufayi. You know, if you are, that is why I deliberately cascaded my topic from how states are being made to how we build a state, instead of how we build a nation. When you go to Kaduna, you see clearly how to build a state that is happening there, simply because he strongly believes on competency. On the first January, I listened to his interview in Arise Television. He said he has 18 states he yeah, had young people from 18 states working in his government. They are not indigenous of Kaduna State. Indigenous from other states, 18 in number. A good example of delivered of that category, Malin Nasuri Rufai, he set up Kashim Ibrahim Fellowship. In the whole 36 states, no state has that kind of a fellowship that mentor young people. And this is like the third or the, second, or the fourth cohort of a Kashim Ibrahim Fellowship in Kaduna State. Then I come to realize also there are three categories of people that make governor to work. Three people. One is family. We have seen a state where the first lady decides what happened. We have seen a state where the first son decides what happened. We have seen a state where the mother of the governor decides what happened in that state. 
So this is family affairs. And the second group of people that met governor to do something are his friends, after family friends. And the last group, you'll be shocked and you'll be surprised. The Babalawos, the Malams, the Juju, every single governor, to some extent, that have those kind of people. There was a state I visited, I want to see the governor, and it became very difficult for me. And then I said, he has this one man at the extreme end of the town. When you visit him, you arrange on how to see a governor, how to see the governor. And I went. After my conversation, he said, sit down here, the governor will be here within the tinkle of an eye. And before you realize it, the governor arrived to see the man, and we met there. So that is to tell you that for a governor to do anything in his state, these three group of people influence his decision. The family, the friends, and the juju and whatever that you're listening to. I've seen a governor where his predecessor died, being the deputy governor, they swear him as the incoming governor, and the Baba Lao and the Malam say, don't go into that government house. Stay in your house and finish the tenure. And he listened. So lastly, we have a system whereby we call the three drivers of reform in state. Everything I mentioned here, about six or seven are three, three. These last three are structure, staff, and system. Please, this is a very important three S. Structure, staff, and system. I will still go back to Kaduna State as a very good example. When Malay Nasuru came on board, he realized that the structure is not working. He was the only governor that reformed the entire ministry and come up with Ministry of Innovation, Ministry of Internal Affairs and State Security, Ministry of Human Capital Development. He restructured the entire uh, architecture of governance in Kaduna State. This is a good example of how leaders should be able to build a state through the structural reform. Number two, the system. He realized that the system is not working. He used data and sacked thousands of teachers that cannot be able to read and write, even to answer primary four exams. That is how to build a state. And the lastly is the staff. If you know Malin Nasur Erufai very well, you know that he believes on competency, capacity, and character, another 3C. Thank you very much for having my time.